Hello everyone and welcome back to Planet Zoo. So for quick reference, yes, I already did a tour of this zoo. However, I felt like I should redo it just because the audio was really bad and I'm actually going to leave the old one up. It is actually called the Garbo Tour. So uh, credit to Achievement Hunter for coming up with Garbo and Garbo Man, but uh yeah, that video, I, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to redo this video because I I really should make it actually good, and uh, it's still going to be bad FPS, though uh, I think it's actually going to be better this time because there's fewer guests, um, totally uh, intentional <laughs> with that, uh, hopefully... Uh, I get more though while we're out here but uh, anyway I'm gonna do a quick overhead tour of the zoo and uh, so over here we have the Gemsbach exhibit uh, right here in the center this was the first thing I did uh, the, the second I built was actually or second exhibit I built uh, was the sable antelopes exhibit and here is the sable Grove, as I'm going to call it. Uh, this is the Gemsbach Scrub, as I'm going to nickname it. Uh, the first thing I technically did was this staff area, uh, the staff alley right here. Uh, that's where the staff are set up and such. Uh, so I built that. There's pretty much every staff building. Uh, there's a few duplicates. Uh, there isn't a water treatment place but uh, partially because I didn't intend to have any water yet for the zoo. Uh, third thing I built was the Baird Taper Forest, uh, Baird's Forest, as I'm gonna call it. Uh, could do this a little bit better, but uh, I'm happy with what it is. So uh, this is where the Baird's Taper are. Then fourth thing is the Warthog uh, warthog brush, I guess. Uh, so that's where our warthogs are. Uh, then I added on this area. Uh, also, this was, I think, when I was making the Baird's tape here, I decided to add a second staff area over here. That's just, uh, I think, a vet place and some keeper places. Um, in theory, I should have another mechanic, but I really need to just worry about that later. Uh, regardless, so here is the pronghorn thicket, as I'm going to call it. Uh, that was the last exhibit I built. I added this area. I was hoping to maybe put African elephants here. It does actually look a little bit small, maybe. Uh, maybe some Indian rhinos over here. Uh, Indian elephants right here. Though I could actually, theoretically, do Indian elephants here. Indian rhino in the middle, and then African elephant here. Would potentially be better. But, uh, as you can see, I'm negative cash all because I took a loan that maybe I shouldn't have but uh, conservation is bad huh. marketing's good um, I think animal rating maybe just some keeper slowness perhaps uh, but anyway uh, so we're gonna take a sort of deeper dive into what I've built here uh, also there's a guest area I've added right here it's not much of an actual like food court area but I decided just to leave them along there uh, excuse me I gotta get my dog in my room once again she scratches at the door
So, uh, funnily enough, she actually was uh, scratching at the door uh, last time I made this video. So, sort of funny how that happened twice now. Uh, so, anyway, uh, here is the Gemsbach exhibits. Uh, this is Zuberi and Amina. I don't know which is which. Uh, they are not sexually dimorphic, so. Uh, that is Amina. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned before, that's a bug. It's weird. But in animal trading, it actually is the right one. Uh, and I'm also going to show this off now. I'm going to. I'll bring this up again, but uh, we'll get back to the animal market. But it's a whole thing that eh, I'm honestly. I have mixed feelings about it. Let us say that. Um, also, how you place animals can occasionally be sort of odd. How you bring animals in. But, uh, I specifically remember getting lock. They weren't properly here, which is odd is all heck, but they show the sable antelope symbol there. And this was before I got sable antelopes in my zoo. Uh, it's taking forever to load, as it always does. Because this game is almost too powerful. Why is it all male? Hmm. Yeah, sometimes it's a bunch of female, other times it's a bunch of male. That's another thing. Like, this, it's cool, but sometimes I'm iffy about it. Five months to be... Ooh. Uh, yeah, you can actually see the Gems Box symbol here. Um, it's actually, uh, sort of interesting to see. So, anyway, uh, we have Zuberi and Amina. Uh, we have Zuberi here, uh, messing with our, uh, movable feature. Um, Sorry I've had to turn the graphics down so much, it's honestly, this is what my laptop can do. Uh, it doesn't help that the game is on Steam, and you have to play franchise mode online. Uh, they are, they do have a solution to that problem coming with the actual release with a fourth mode possibly called enterprise mode we we don't know anything about it but uh, as you can see these animal models are incredibly incredibly detailed I mean even on my garbo laptop you can still sort of make out that detail which is also why my computer is absolutely dying uh, I don't know what's up with this. Uh, at least we have a vet. Back up. But, uh... Yeah, the Gums are doing pretty well. Uh, they've been here... Pretty much since the start. And they've been doing good. Um... So, as for the plants, uh... We have a few frankincense trees dotted around. Uh, some aloe vera. Uh, you need a lot of sand, and I actually ended up doing this with 70% uh, strength. I would not be doing it to anyone. I personally wouldn't suggest it. Uh, then again, I'm not a. Uh, elaborate designer. I'm somewhat of a crude individual uh, as shown by the fact that 
none of the buildings are custom. Uh, but I'm happy with the simplistic designs I've made. So here is the Warthog exhibit. Uh, so they were fourth. Uh, there, they are Kafale and Neima. Uh, also, uh, if you didn't notice before, Zuberi is the male Gemsbach and Amina is the female. So this is Neima, our female warthog, and Kafale is our male warthog. Uh, she also has very dark uh, fur by the looks. But, uh, so yeah, there's a, these are bird's nest ferns, uh, tamarind tree, and then tree ferns. There's holes in this plains area. I am perhaps the happiest with this exhibit, uh, in terms of its looks. I feel like I really got there with the, uh... environment and making it look good uh, it's a small exhibit but I'm so happy with how it turned out it just I'm I'm just so happy with myself it's relatively small but they are a small animal so it doesn't really matter as much but this is something I'm happy with. I have a little forest area here that's well shaded, an open area, uh, some grass to cover up the shelter. Uh, but anyway, um, I'm gonna do them next, but uh, we're gonna go over to the bear's tapir next. Uh, this, I, I could do better. Um, we have uh, Tonawak, uh, Tonawak, as our male taper, and Tlazatsin, our female taper. This is, uh, and I'll show both of them so you can see the spelling on that. Uh, that's Tonawak, and this is Tlazatsin. Uh, however, we have a baby tapir that I know is named Koato. There we are. Let's look at the baby animal. I've never actually looked at him up close, but uh, I'm pretty sure he's doing well. Um, is he a year old now? Yeah, um, so here's the little guy. Um, Uh, he is next to a big feeder barrel, and, uh, yeah, something you'll notice about taper babies is that they have these stripes and spots on them, uh, that is to help them sort of blend in with the foliage, uh, they lose this when they're older, um, also this could use a swimming area, but, uh, I A didn't think about it at the time and B uh, don't really have the funds for it as you see and that would require a big messing around with and it would just be probably more trouble than it's worth but uh, I'm actually going to release this baby to the wild and we may actually I may see if I can wait until he grows up and we'll release him in this video, maybe. I, I can make promises that we'll see him fulfill his destiny in South America as a chosen one to save his species. Uh, because birds safe here are extinct, uh, not extinct, uh, endangered. Um, I was talking about extinct animals in another video, um, that, uh, you may actually have seen, uh, it's one of the Challenge Zoo example builds, uh, where I talk about extinct animals a bunch. 
I'm gonna call mechanic to this because these guys are semi aggressive but uh, uh, by semi aggressive I mean they're a bit territorial um, I'm actually open the Zoopedia to double check um, so that opens Zoopedia give me the tool tip oh. I can open it from here. So we're, we'll just check this out. Um, uh, pronghorn. Level up. Uh, of course, because I've been wanting to level up my pronghorn research. Because uh, as the newest animal, I need to research them. Uh, cause I have the least research on them, currently. Just because they're the last thing I added, so I've had less time to do vet research. Uh, yeah, they're endangered, so... Uh, we're gonna send Kowadl back. Because he is the chosen one. He shall be the boy who lived. Um. Uh, anyway, uh... I have some elephant ear plants here in the front area tamarind trees in the back I and mean, this is something um, I don't remember the name off the top of my head but uh, this is a custard apple tree uh, to help hide the shelter um, as a side note uh, this area these plants I placed here uh, the salt cedar bush uh, these I actually put here in order to hide the shelter. Uh, also, there's grass here. Because I decided to have some grass under their shelter. Because it's comfier than sand, probably. I mean, you, you wouldn't, want, wouldn't want to lay in sand all the time. That would just be a mess. I mean, it's hard enough to get sand out when you're on, sitting on the beach for a bit. and On a towel, even. But imagine laying it in a bed. Of sand that'd be something but uh, anyway so uh, on to the next section is going to be the second exhibit I made because the bears taper were third uh, this is my sable antelope exhibit uh, there is the uh, sort of grove area that is hooked thorn acacias and I don't remember uh, marula trees uh, some nettles in the plains area up front uh, there's a medium baobab tree right here in the back a sort of a detail um, so the sable antelopes are zuberi and amina uh, that is zuberi that's amina zuberi is male amina is female uh, and this is possibly their. I'm an idiot. Uh, it's Wambua and Barika. Ugh! <laughs> I kind of want the, them to have the Gemsbach names, but oh well. Uh, we're going to look at Wambua for a bit. This is our majestic male sable antelope. And. Uh, they had a they were actually the first uh, animal we had to have a child and uh, I don't remember its name but uh, I mean not that it was it's been a while so I don't quite remember its name but uh, I released it to the wild and I also previously released the Gemsbach who you actually may have seen in the Garbo tour, uh, Bet Sarai. Uh, but this is Wambua, our most majestic male sable antelope. Uh, they're probably my favorite animal I have in the zoo. I'm so happy with it. And he even has scars on him. I mean,. He's the sort of character that I'm I'm gonna miss him. So he's really the 
cry to this zoo, and I I honestly wish I could keep him in the main game, but I'll name my first new sable antelope after him, and he shall be forever immortalized alongside the rest of the animals in the zoo. Because I am going to play the release. Uh, I may do an updated Obzon Zoo tour where I show you guys uh, the freeform mode version of this zoo that I'm hopefully going to build that actually has the other animals that I wanted to add here but just couldn't. Uh, and last but not least, we have our pronghorn antelopes, Oliver uh, and Zophany. Um, can't exactly tell which is which from here, but I think that's Oliver. That's going to be Zophany, isn't it? Yep. So this is Oliver, uh, the male pronghorn. Uh, this area I'm actually really happy with. This is a white birch with a uh, bracken for ground cover. Um, this is the last exhibit I was able to make, sadly. Because this is where the uh, 75k loan killed me. Uh, there's a zookeeper scooping poop. Because uh, I wonder if it's scooping up the uh, Gemsbach poop from the last video. Uh, but anyway, uh, there's also some hawthorn bushes. Uh, I did put a few lady ferns over there. There would be more, but I ran out of cash before I could finish it. But uh, And it wouldn't let me go further negative with plants. But anyway, so this is Zophany. And uh, I've done some work. Uh, I put some enrichment items that technically the research hasn't shown that they work yet, but uh, I've unlocked them, and they do have the tag for the animals, but uh, I'm not entirely happy with how the soil looks, but uh, that's just a, something that just comes with the game. It's just going to be that way. Uh, so it is what it is, you know. It's it is how it is. Oh, there goes my dog yapping at something. Uh, I don't know if you could hear it, but my dog was uh, growling at something. Don't know what, but uh, yeah. And also, we're gonna have a quick look at the people models because this is gonna be something I'm gonna rant about in a bit, but. Uh, in my review section, but uh, yeah, here's a look at the people, so it's something, alright, uh, I'll save that for a bit, but uh, anyway, that is uh, my tour of the Obzon Zoo, uh, so now I'm going to actually go to the review portion for this, uh, so I will actually start this off with I enjoy this game I find it fun but there are things I'm not entirely a fan of sometimes the controls can be a little awkward for me but I think it's partially because I'm dealing with going from two second oh, I've never seen him use this is he going to throw it? I also accidentally did the uh, quick way. Didn't work before in the uh, tutorial, which I'm not going to be able to record me doing the tutorial zoo because it was getting one FPS without uh, doing anything uh, on its own with just uh, steam in the background which 
mostly because there's a a lot of guests and b a lot of animals in that zoo so it's sort of a, a recipe for disaster to say the least but uh it's just carrying this i'm i'm sort of interested to see what he does with this but uh anyway this game is incredible and there's a lot of cool stuff like the animals look gorgeous in this game but it's also a problem that they look so good because the people as you saw earlier look well they don't look good in comparison uh, and for reference uh, this is actually Frontier's uh, second planet game and uh, they actually have the human models from Planet Coaster uh, translated into this also epic lag spike uh, yeah sorry I I'm powerless my FPS goes zero it goes zero uh, it's going between when three is it likes to go to three uh, by the looks three oh, I'm getting four FPS it's a miracle but uh, anyway I uh, so I can sort of from a game design perspective understand it oh, he's being but uh, I can sort of understand why they would want to use those models as it's like okay we we're gonna use the same models or like base models from Planet Coaster because uh oh he's actually pooping okay but uh, anyway it's sort of like you know solidarity between games and also uh, it's sort of easier it means they have more time for the animals and don't have to spend as much time on the game and also they don't have to work their animators so hard because I mean let's be honest even I mean if you've seen any other footage uh, it's just incredible detail they have yeah this is uh, Lambua, you're killing my frame rate, but you are so majestic. Yeah, hopefully that's one of the screenshots, just because he, he looks so majestic. But uh, anyway, so uh, there's sort of a game design perspective that, yeah, it actually kind of makes sense to do... Uh, the planet coaster people models but for me it sort of detracts from the game because it's like okay there's two different art styles here and they don't work together on one side you have the awesome amazing and beautiful animals they're animated with such great detail and you have the people that are very cartoony and in my opinion don't look good uh, I think they would probably fit better in Planet Coaster but uh, Planet Zoo they sort of just don't quite fit to me and it's sort of like I'd rather they make new people models for this game and maybe made it where they're a little more realistic and don't have to be too much more realistic but maybe update them a bit from uh, doing uh, Planet Coaster uh, but anyway um, another gripe with this game and uh, this is more of a push and pull system that it's like a more personal preference and an opinion but sometimes this game can be a little harsh on the uh, 
realism side to a degree and I'm honestly sort of annoyed by it at times that it's I can appreciate the level of realism they have but at the same time I'm sort of sad that we may aren't going to see some of the stuff we saw with Zoo Tycoon and Zoo Tycoon 2 such as with the uh, Extinct Animals expansion in Zoo Tycoon 2. I would love to see an expansion like that, but I'm not sure they could do that. So, uh, I'm sort of sad that maybe they won't be able to do that, but that doesn't stop me from hoping. I hope they do it, but I don't know if they will. Uh, but, regardless... Oh, that's sort of a minor thing to me, but, uh, and it's more of something that I can appreciate the level of realism, it's just, me personally, I kinda wish they had some more, less intensive, more user-friendly stuff at times. Uh, also, the conservation point system, it honestly feels like it's not gonna be fun, because and it may actually ruin the game that getting conservation points is not too easy uh, we're quickly gonna exit out of here to sort of show uh, the sort of inherent risks they're taking with this system and why it's sort of a cause for concern um, oh that's oh that's our uh, baby pronghorn. That's not good. Um, I'm pretty sure the vets will deal with that, uh, so I'm going to talk for a bit. Um, so you get it for logging in daily. Uh, you can sell animals in the marketplace, but that's not something you're going to be doing a lot. Releasing animals to the wild. Uh, once again, you won't necessarily be doing that a bunch, but... Uh, and then completing challenges. Uh, there's uh, community challenges, and then there's the daily slash weekly monthly challenges as well. But this is a thing that has me worried because from the looks of it, the economy is going to be an absolute mess. And... Uh, this is mostly because, uh, wrong tab. Oops. Um, so we're going to look at the animal market because, uh, it's sort of, the animal economy has me concerned because there's not many easy ways of getting conservation points. And almost all of the animals use conservation points. So there's this huge long list of uh, animals you can buy or purchase uh, with conservation points. Oh, <laughs> two MDs and an MC. Those are just people. Uh, we're going to go to cash listings that are there's just none. Uh, we may give it a second, but there's not that many cash trades, and in some places, it's never the ones you want. So, I feel like it's a balancing issue that the game really loves to show you uh, conservation point trades and almost never gives cash ones and certainly not for the animals you do want because I want to had I wanted to have African elephants but uh, yeah they're like thousands of points and I you start with like 500 it's like 
how are you supposed to get so many so quickly? It's absurd. And I'm also concerned because this may end up being a premium currency you can buy. And if so, that is just absurd. But I, I don't think they will, personally. I, I'm pretty confident in saying they are decent enough to be like, okay, let's not do that. But... Uh, it's sort of like you only rarely get cash trades and I feel like maybe the system they should have gone for is you can always find a cash trade for a mating pair of animals i.e. there's always going to be a cash listing for male and female animal of any given species uh also, I feel like the UIs can be a little finicky at times. They feel, uh, once again, sort of goes down into the accessibility and user friendliness. It doesn't feel quite as intuitive as Zoo Tycoon 2 does. And Zoo Tycoon 2 is possibly the best of its kind, but it does. In UI, to be honest, I mean, it, it is like this area right here. So, it takes up a lot of your space, but uh, it, it's sort of like, to me at times, it's a necessary evil. Whereas in this game, it's really... Oh, there's Barika photobombing us. That's going to be funny if that's uh, one of the pictures it gives me. Uh, and so for reference, uh, YouTube will give you like three photo suggestions, and that's what I've been using recently. Uh, oh, Wavy is looking at the camera. I wonder if he's like that posing kudu at uh, Disney World I saw once a few years back at uh, Animal Kingdom Lodge. I was uh, pretty sure it was a greater kudu that was uh, posing for the camera, but... That's just a funny story. Uh, but anyway, back on track. Uh, so I kind of wish they just had maybe some more fluid menus that were easier to access. And maybe they missed with the animal trade menu a bit. Because I'm not entirely a fan of it right now. Uh, it doesn't help that this is a Garbo laptop. So it could be a hardware thing. But from my perspective, it's sometimes a bit difficult to navigate, especially because you have to scroll through all the species. And you're also not necessarily guaranteed to get a male and female of any given species as well. Which can sort of be annoying when it's like like it was now where it's all male. And you're just like, I want to be able to breed them because I release the babies the younger ones into the wild it's sort of like can I not get a mating pair for my zoo uh, which times I guess can be realistic that it's like you know you're not always going to get it but I feel like there should all be a cash trade for one of each like every time you open it up it'll be uh, two cash trades guaranteed and one will always be a male, one will always be a female, and you can also get more potentially at random. So it's like one day you might see there's a bunch of cash trades for animals. Um, aww. They're snuggling. You might be about to mate. Aww. I've never seen this. I was too busy building taper exhibit, probably. But, ah, uh, yeah, he's this. This is incredible behavior. You can tell they're mates. Uh, but anyway, um. As for other problems, uh, sometimes the controls feel odd. Uh, 
There is one problem I have that it m sort of does need to be addressed is uh, I, I'm not going to show it right now, but you can't do this and move the screen. It, it just feels weird because so many other games like this do that. And I mean, that's been the norm for RTS and simulation games for years. And yet here we go with a game that doesn't do that. And it's just like, I, it feels wrong that I can't do that. It's like, what? That's just mind boggling. But uh, regardless, uh, at times I feel like maybe it's because I'm so used to playing other games such as Zoo Tycoon 2 that I'm very used to those controls with other buttons. But uh, so other than that, I think that is the one issue that I think is an issue. Everything else I feel like it could maybe be brought down to I actually have played a bunch of other games of their kind, so it's sort of like you're doing, you want it to be the same across all the games, and I, I haven't messed with the uh, keybinds at all. Uh, I usually don't. Uh, the only exception is uh, Halo Master Chief Collection, but uh, that's just because I want the uh, universal zoom and shoot, because Halo does not use the typical controls except in Halo 5, which I'll admit it's nice they use the normal controls and translated that in. It may work at aim down sights with all the guns again, but uh, otherwise it didn't make mistakes, but uh, this is about Planet Zoo, not Master Chief Collection. Yeah, better angle on them. Drinking our lovely, lovely scarred sable antelope, Wambua. But uh, anyway, as a whole, I feel like this game is, for me, an eight out of ten. With the context that Zoo Tycoon Two is an eight point five, and is possibly my highest rated uh, game of this type. Uh, I wouldn't rate it at a 9, uh, just because I feel like, well, maybe I would rate Zoo Tycoon 2 as a 9, and maybe this is an 8.5, and Zoo Tycoon 1 would be an 8 for me. Just because Zoo Tycoon 1, it has some dated concepts, and it sort of hasn't aged as well. Uh, also, another minor problem I have with this game is, and this is a problem I sort of have with Zoo Tycoon 1 and why I don't like it as much, but the game really wants you to do specific things with how the exhibit looks. I mean, it wants you to get specific plants and specific terrain. That I sort of feel like there's less room for creativity at times. And it's sort of like... You kind of have to finick to mess with it to make it look good. I mean, at times it can be sort of like, oh, it actually makes more of a challenge to be like, okay, I have to do stuff within these parameters, but... Uh, get a better view of the scar. Uh... But anyway, I it's just a nitpick more than anything. And as for the plants, I actually sort of appreciate in Zoo Tycoon 2, you can use the plants you want to use. Uh, and the coverage system is sort of... It's annoying at times, partially because some of the plants are absurd at how big they are. Like the big baobabs... They're humongous. It's like absurd how big they are. And I might actually show how big the Cape Oaks and uh, the big Baobabs are, but it's they get tall in this game. And it's just 
crazy they even considered adding trees that tall. It's realistic, but uh, maybe a little bit over realistic. So, uh, it's sort of like all the games adding realistic mechanics when it's to a degree that it's just like more of a hassle and annoying. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna quickly show you how tall K-Poke trees are because they're huge. Uh, Now there are several things that uh, this game does really well that nothing else does with the uh, blueprints and construction tab, where it's like you can build buildings yourself. Uh, you can just go to facilities and bury uh, the facilities and make the pre-made ones, but. bad it's a taiga and it's North American uh, I don't usually do North American ones. yeah look at how tall this is it's huge also ironic that it's an alpine facilia but it only shows taiga yeah it's uh, that deal is what it is. I'm bang a bamboo. Hmm. Farm it. Bamboo. Bamboo bamboo. Um. Looks nice. I was, like, I was just wanting to look that. Uh, and where's my capo tree? It's like how they have some broken trees. Like, here we go. Uh, ah, that's what those are right there. Those are the candelabra trees I used. Where is the capo? Because I want to show how absurd they are. I should put it to tree mode, but. I've gone this far. Fountain bamboo. Yeah, this is in Z-Token 2 as well. Oh, it actually looks nice in this. And by nice, I mean beautifully nice. Foxtail palms. Uh, those are in Asia, aren't they? Which explains why I haven't used them yet. Ah, here we are. I think this is the smallest one. And it's huge! I mean, look at that! How are you supposed to use it in a normal size zoo? I mean, how? And they... Um, no, that one actually is smaller. That's the... I think that one, too, is the smallest. Er, well... Well... But still, they're so big in this game. It's absurd. Uh, yeah, here's the lady friends I was using in the fun home exhibit. Uh, those are nettles, by the way, in here. Hey, this is a strip of vines. Oh, I've seen these trees. Oh, that's a monkey puzzle. Huh. That looked like some of the trees I saw at Camp Alexander in Colorado a few years back. Reminding the pine trees there. Uh, that was a long time ago. Uh, that was summer camp, like, years ago. I think it was midway through my time in Boy Scouts. We went there. Because I was Boy Scout years ago. Well, by years, I mean, I aged out 
three years ago about. Uh, but anyway, so uh, this game, I appreciate its level of re re real. At times, it can sort of hurt itself with that realism from financial stuff, but. Uh, and also, like, sometimes it hampers your creativity because you can't always use everything you want to use because the animals are, like, sort of nitpicky about what you do with their exhibits. Such as this is actually about full coverage I can get for plants with the uh, sable antelope. Ah... Uh, uh, how do I print screen? Uh, not print screen. Uh, screenshot. Um, F twelve. I'm gonna use that. I I had to get that screenshot because it was so majestic. Um. I'm not sure if that was a bug or uh my laptop, but uh if you didn't notice, his tongue was no clipping through his mouth. Or is now I kid you not, it was ridiculous looking, but uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> that, that, that may be a feature uh, <laughs> um, so regardless, uh, all in all I think I'd rate this game probably 8.5 out of 10 it's it, I wish this game came sooner in my life maybe when I had an actually good PC I could use for stuff uh, back in the day when I was doing Gary's Mod stuff, which this laptop doesn't even run Gary's Mod anymore. I think it used to, but it, I don't know what's up with this. I, I've i done what I, what I can, but it's this laptop is what it is now, but uh, anyway, um, I'm going to get out of this and sort of given my thoughts on this game and shown you my zoo and you've gotten to see the majestic Wambua. Oh, he's actually a five-star animal. Oh, that's incredible. Scars and all. I really want to make some silly Chuck Norris uh wham you a deal backstory for him but I mean it's silly as heck but uh, anyway I will see you guys next time and uh, I actually mentioned this in the previous video but I might do some tours of my zoos in Zoo Tycoon 2 uh, including the Obzon Zoo I made in that so uh, without further ado I will see you guys next time Please don't do this again. Oh no, it's happening again. Uh, <laughs> so there was a whole five minutes from the Garbo tour I cut because I couldn't stop recording. Uh, that's, that's happened again. <laughs> so I'll, I'll get this dealt with soonish I think uh, anyway see you guys next time